Hey, welcome again. The back story of this video goes back to the time when I designed my first 5 transistor OTA. Fully motivated and overconfident, I quickly did some hand calculations and simulated my design. But what I saw next perplexed me. The DC gain was matching, yes, but I was expecting a particular gain and phase at some frequency which wasn't matching with my calculations. I scratched my head for a bit and realized that it's not spice that's wrong, but I missed to consider the effect of the non-dominant pole due to the capacitor CM. We all know that the output capacitor will introduce a pole at the frequency 1 by 2 pi R out CL, where R out is the parallel combination of ROP and RON. Now let's try to find out the effect of the pole due to CM. Interestingly, CM also introduces a zero due to the current mirroring. The impedance across CL is simply 1 by GMP, neglecting the R0 terms in front of GMP of course. So the pole will be at GMP by 2 pi CM with a negative frequency of course. Now let's compute the location of the zero. The source of the NMOS is a small signal ground for differential operation. We thus arrive at the small signal model as shown. We have a GMVI d by 2 current flowing into the parallel combination of the capacitor and 1 by GMP to develop a voltage of minus GMVI d by 2 over SC plus GMP at the gates of the PMOS. This forces the PMOS to pull a current of GM times V. We also have another current of GM N times VI D by 2 coming from the bottom NMOS. Since we wish to find the location of the zero, meaning a frequency at which the output voltage is zero, thus no current should be flowing to the output so that no voltage is generated. Therefore, we equate the magnitude of the PMOS and NMOS currents to get the location of the zero. It turns out that the zero lies at minus 2 GMP by CM, which is twice the pole frequency. In summary, the current mirror capacitor introduces a set of a pole and a zero. Let's quickly look at the effect of, of the pole and the zero on the phase. The phase degradation due to the pole is minus tan inverse F by FP, whereas the zero adds a phase of tan inverse F by 2 FP. Let's call this function G of F. We can differentiate this function with respect to f and find out the frequency at which we have the maximum phase shift. The more motivated folks among you can try that out and see that we have the max phase shift at f equal to root 2 times fp. Plugging that in, we get a max phase shift of about 19.5 degrees. I have attached a graph to verify this as well. Alright, thanks for tuning in. Until next time, peace.